In this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, California F-bombs equal hyper-demerge. But have no fear, the Federal Maritime Commission is here. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCagliano. I'm the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science here at Campbell University in beautiful Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about the fines that are being leveled against the shipping carriers by the ports of LA and Long Beach. Now, I know I just talked about that the past episode where I talked about them dropping F-bombs on the carriers, but I am sometimes accused of making things worse than they actually are. But it appears as my last video, I did not make it worse than it was. As a matter of fact, I undersold what the ports of LA and Long Beach are doing. Greg Miller's story, uh, shippers fear a catastrophic fallout from crazy California port fees. So the story here is we finally got a meeting of this National Shippers Advisory Council. Uh, this National Shipper Advisory Council, this is the notice that came out from the Fe uh, Federal Maritime Commission, finally met. This is the council that's supposed to basically advise the FMC, made up of 12 importers, 12 exporters. They finally got around to meeting. They've named their chair and vice chair. And what they're to do is really give a firsthand perspective to the FMC about issues, particularly involving something called detention and demerge. Demerge is when you drop the containers off at the terminal and they sit there too long and there are late fees associated with that. Detention is the opposite end. Detention is when it's out at the warehouse and the containers are held for a long period of time and not returned. So basically they're late fees. It's kind of like if you, if you uh, for those older people in here, you check a book out from the library and you don't get it back in time, you start getting charged with fees or movie rentals, even older for, for older people, or if you rent a car and don't return it on time. These are the type of things we're talking about here. Uh, this story talks about how terrible these fees are because again, I undersold this in the last story. I sat there and said that the FMC, oh, excuse me, not the FMC, but the ports of LA and Long Beach are initiating demurrage charges starting nine days after a container is landed for road pickup trucks and six days, initially three, but then changed six for rail. And they were getting charged $100 a day above that. So if you're day 10 for road transport, you'd be charged hundred day, $100. And then every day after that, you'd be charged $100. Now, I was wrong. I, I, listen, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm wrong a lot of times, but I'm definitely wrong this time because it's not $100 each day, it's $100 exponentially. Meaning that within 30 days, this charge grows. After, after 15, 14 days, it's $10,000 by day 30, so it's actually day 39 by, by, uh, by road or day 36 by rail, you are now gonna pay a hyper demerge charge of $46,000 and $500. Now, this is being levied by the Port of LA and Long Beach against the shipping companies, ONE, CMA, Zim, HMM, Costco, Hapagloid, MSC, Maersk, you name it, the big shipping companies. This is all gonna be levied against also Matson and, and Pasha and a few others. Uh, and the reason the Port of LA and Long Beach are doing this is twofold. Number one, they want to get the containers off their terminals. They've got a big, huge log jam. Go back to Ryan's uh, story from Flexport, talking about all the issues with ships sitting in port. The other issue here is the shipping carriers have a lot of money right now. This is a G-Captain report on ONE's recent report. We're going to see these third quarter reports coming out. ONE reports $4 billion in profit. $4 billion there's a potential to tap into some money here. This money is being tapped into. And now all these big shipping companies are gonna be forced to pay this hyper demerge charge right now. At the same time that these companies are making record profits, first one we've seen here is ONE. We'll see some more coming in, but then you get this, trade groups pushing on FMC to start taking action, start taking actions against the carriers. This in particular is a story about uh, the uh, 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 Travel Good Association does luggage, backpacks, other things. One billion dollar uh, uh, industry in the United States. They're asking for immediate action 
aggressive enforcement and leadership to bring the full gamut of stakeholders to the table, provide relief and, ref and more. And in the end, it goes here. The FMC has conducted numerous inquiries on excessive and unjust fees, on unreasonable policies and practices. These inquiries must now turn into enforcement actions to bring the scourge of excessive fees and unreasonable carrier practices to an end. Let's be clear about something right here. Port of LA and Long Beach are going to charge these ever escalating hyperinflation to the carriers, the shipping companies. The shipping companies are gonna pay exactly zero of that amount. They are going to pass that along because they have it written into most of their contracts that tariffs and fees imposed by ports are passed on to the shipper, not the carrier. That's gonna be paid by these travel groups. This company or, or, or the group that they, they represent, the shipping company or the, the, the companies they represent, the people who are moving the goods, they're the ones who are gonna be charged this. And I have to tell you, this is not the Port of LA and Long Beach doing this. If you see the meeting that John Picari, the port envoy who leads this FMC group had with Gene Soroka of LA, you'll know that this is coming from the federal government. The FMC cannot get at the carriers. They can't. They have been basically lost all their power. The Federal Maritime Commission, which comes into existence in 1961, was created to regulate international shipping. But in 1984 and 1998, they were deregulated. And now they have almost no oversight of that. And the reason we know that is because of this. Fact finding number 2009. This has been going on since March, not of 2021, of 2020. Rebecca Dye, one of the commissioners, has been leading this fact finding. And what she has been targeting is excessive demerge. This charge, which is getting passed on to the shippers, the people shipping the cargo. Even though the Port of LA and Long Beach are saying, listen, we're, 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 no, that's, we're passing the cost to the carrier, not the shipper. No, the carrier is going to just pass it on. And we know that because if you look at the findings that are coming out in the FMC report, right here, the correspondence sent to industry urges ocean carriers to display detention demerge charges clearly and prominently on their webpage and customer portal. There's nothing about $100 exponential hyper demerge charge anywhere. Develop and document clear internal processes in all matters relating to detention and demerge. Steve Farrar over on Freightwaves talked about the fact that they, he found that the Port of LA can't enact this without a 30 day window. And it's gotta go before the commissioners before this be approved. Clearly delineate dispute resolution procedures. None of that, none, none of this exists. The FMC is goal right now is to help against excessive detention to merge. Yet the FMC through the port envoy, John Bakari, is pushing the ports of LA and Long Beach to enact this. And if I am wrong, come out and say that, but they're not because they are, they're pushing this. They know that this is going to be pushed right on to the shipper. So in one hand, you have one element of the FMC who's looking at detention and demerge and saying there, yeah, this is excessive, we need to fix this. And on the other hand, they're pushing hyper demerge to get at those profits that they can't get at. And all of that became manifest in the hearing of a new federal maritime commissioner. The other day I did a series of tweets. Uh, and if you don't follow me on Twitter, at Mercogliano S, uh, I'll put it up here in the link so you can uh, link right on over to it. But I did a series of uh, tweets where I talked about this. There was a story in the Journal of Commerce talking about the nomination of, uh, of uh, his name is, um, believe me, there it is, Max Vekic. He was to be the next commissioner on the Federal Maritime Commission. He was nominated last month. He's replacing Sola uh, on the Federal Maritime Commission. And so the hearing was held. And the Journal of Commerce ran this story. And what the nominee for the Federal... And understand, when you become a nominee for the Federal Maritime Commission, you're not just plucked out. You apply for it. You apply for this job. And then out of the applicants, the president will choose somebody and put it in. So this guy who's going to be chosen here has a history 
in the field. He is basically a former state legislator from the state of Washington, a uh, Democrat. He also works for the Pacific Maritime Association. This is the organization that, that coordinates the longshoremen in all West Coast ports. Uh, he's been a crew boss for the longshoremen. He's got kids that are in the longshoremen union. He's got a daughter-in-law that's in the longshoremen union. And this is really important because the longshoremen on the West Coast are up for contract renegotiation next year. And so putting a longshoreman on the Federal Maritime Commission is really important. I want you to listen to this question by uh, 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 Senator Wicker, who's uh, one of the ranking members here, uh, to uh, Mr. Vekic on the issue. The commissioners have all the authority they need, and if not, what authorities should be granted to them? I'm glad you asked that, Senator. But, and, and as a former legislator, I was so tempted to wade into that but I don't think it's appropriate for me to take fight sides in that fight at this point in time when I'm not confirmed. And in, after I'm confirmed, maybe I would have a better uh, feel. And after, because I haven't learned everything that I need to know about what the agency does and what their powers are. I've studied to this point in time. And uh, do I think they need more? I, you know, I I would be much more comfortable if I had a better grasp. Well, I, I think it would me. be all right. Uh, um, since you you seek to be confirmed, I think it would be all right to seem to be confirmed. Your thoughts about this? Well, I, I'm going to be I, asking for advice on what legislation we might enact. Just 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 time out. I I, I don't know what the powers are of the FMC. You, you you applied to be a commissioner in the Federal Maritime Commission. He's been up for this position for over a month. I'm sure if he asked, someone with the Federal Maritime Commission would have come and told him what the powers are. They've got a website. Uh, I, he could have called me. I, I, I tell him what the Federal Maritime Commission is all about. I've, I've written about it. Uh, the fact that, number one, he doesn't know, and number two, he doesn't want to say anything, is a problem in my opinion. Again, this is, this is my opinion, but I, I would think if you're being put up in charge of the Federal Maritime Commission, you should, number one, know what the Federal Maritime Commission does, and then number two, have a prospect for dealing with, I don't know, the most significant maritime issue the country has faced since World War II? I'm just, just, that's just me. Well, but let's next talk. Well, I'd be happy. And I think all the commissioners have a great set, set of skills and uh, experience. And I'd be happy to, um, it, it once confirmed, to, to wade into that. But I, I think that's really as, as a former legislator, I know I was very jealous of legislative prerogatives, and I, I frankly think that's congressional prerogative, and I'm, uh, I'm offering myself to do a job okay. and to work as directed. Okay, I, I understand that you're reluctant to answer that question. Um, to, to work as directed, first of all, the Federal Maritime Commission is a commission. It is completely independent. That's, that's the definition of a commission, can I be clear? It, it has no oversight from Congress. Does it? It, it doesn't. It, it is. It is. Once you're appointed on the commission, you're independent. You, you do not have to go confirmation. You can't be removed. You you are there for life, or actually not for life, but for your term, and, and, unless you die. And 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 to sit there and sit there and say prerogative. Yeah, you are constrained by laws, but you should have some opinions of some kind. What do you think about? Um data sharing technologies and uh, port automation. How much of a solution would that be to the current crisis? Well, I've seen automation be portrayed as the great be all end all and the salvation of uh, everything. But I think the problem with moving cargo is you still got to move it one container at a time. And it's not rocket science, it's physics. And you just got to move those car, that, those containers. That's true. So the idea that there's a technological fix, I don't, I, I'm not convinced. We still need the bodies, we need the workers to move the cargo. Now, as far as sharing information, notifying truck drivers of their appointment times, uh, appointment slots and all that, and anything we can do to make those truck drivers um, uh, have a more realistic chance of making into the terminal and getting out of the terminal in a speedy time, I think is a positive thing. And I think tech has a role there. And, uh, and I've seen it used there. Okay, well, can I be clear? Number one, he, he's from the Longshoreman Union. 
And of course they're against automation. Automation is the threat that's looming in the contract negotiation next year. One of the things they're pushing here is, is one of the reasons for the delay is it takes too long for trucker, truckers to come in and get that container processed, turned around onto their truck. You know, they're talking about one to three hours for this to happen. It's too long. And one of the things that automation does is, number one, you can run 24-7 all the time. Uh, cranes and, and, and automated uh, 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 trucks moving. Remember, Long Beach just opened up an automated terminal. Uh, we see it overseas. You do need people. Don't get me wrong. You can't get rid of the longshore. You can't. There's too much paperwork that has to be done in physical doing. But he's going to hedge on that. And you're not going to be surprised that he hedges on that because, again, he's from the Longshoreman Union. So, of course, he's going to do that. But, again, we're seeing, again, we're not having shortages. What we're having is, is influxes. We're at record levels. And so there has to be changes to this. So I'll show this next one. This is Senator Tester from Montana. And uh, he asked a serious question. I'm just going to play the very beginning part of the question here because it deals directly with the issue we were just talking about. That's a tough question. I mean, a, a complicated question, Mr. Vecic, but, but hopefully you can answer it very quickly. You've, you've touched on it with the other uh, questioners, and that is you can't turn the nightly news on at night and not see a bunch of ships out in the middle of the ocean uh, ready to be unloaded. Um, I'm a farmer in my real life, and quite frankly, the containers are going back empty, uh, which is a waste of energy and resources. Um, That's true. Can you give Thank me three things that we need to do today uh, that would make a difference, or is this not a situation that's going to be solvable in the next year or two or three? Well, I think we're making progress, Senator, and I think there are... Just be clear, more ships in anchor now than ever before. Just, just, just again. There are things that can happen. Um, talk to me. What are the three? Well, I think number one, we can be serious about enforcement. The FMC val uh, powers now of enforcement on uh, demurrage and detaining and detention. Uh, don't don't reinforce people's uh, or, or uh, uh, sh uh, carriers not moving cargo. So. Don't reinforce carriers not moving cargo. So does that mean to me that the FMC is going to come and hammer Port of LA and Long Beach for hyper demurge? That's what he just said. That's what his view is. Is that going to be the charge that's coming forward? Because that's great, but that's not what's going to happen because the FMC is the one who's pushing this through John Picari, even though Picari is not a member of the FMC, I know, but he's been appointed as the port liaison and he's the one directly talking for the Biden administration to LA and Long Beach. So next is Senator Thune, and Thune asked a, a kind of a similar question to Tester about detention and demerge. Firm, will you commit to working with your fellow commissioners to address this recommendation and improve the transparency of detention and demerge charges? Thank you for that question, Senator. And uh, frankly, uh, helping and reinforcing the efforts to uh, to uh, better oversee the uh, supply chain and uh, Chairman Maffei's uh, efforts on audits, uh, especially on demurrage and uh, detentions are one of the reasons I think uh, I want to do this and uh, help regulation and provide reinforcement and encouragement to continue to um, keep fairness and, um, and keep the supply chain, uh, do what we can to uh, alleviate supply chain congest congestion. Supply chain, the poor congestion, frankly, was one of the reasons I thought I should apply for the job. And um, I have hands-on experience, and I want to do what I can to help move cargo. So this hearing was before the announcement of the hyperinflation. So that's, that's one of the reasons they're not talking about it right now, because this, this was last week, this, this, this discussion. So obviously, he's talking about that he doesn't want detention and demerge on there. But again, that's, that's the prime issue that we're talking about right now. Next is Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee. And so she poses a question uh, to the nominee and I'll let her announce it. As you look at the nomination that is there for you, should the FMC's involvement include vigorous enforcement against ocean carrier conduct that increases cost and inefficiencies, inefficiencies for the supply chain and for these individuals who are exporting? and depending on this supply chain. Yeah, thank you for that 
question. Yeah, he's not thanking Senator. her for that question. I'm told the FMC is not a rate setting organization, but what it does do is have a robust monitoring of anti-competitive behavior. Okay, but again, he's being told what the FMC does. I, I mean, he should know what the FMC does. He's going to be one of five commissioners on the FMC. Please know what they're doing. Please, please tell me you know what they're doing, but let him go on. And uh, to that level, there's say one level, one rule, one standard for all. And um, I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the statutory uh, obligation. And um, how, how, as we move forward, I think vigorous enforcement of that um, may vary over time with certain periods of time. And this is a time when we need that vigorous enforcement to make sure there's not anti-competition effort going on to see if there are unfair surcharges to our American exporters especially, uh, to see uh, and to police police the industry like it's the job of the FMC to do. So let me be clear. I, I actually like Vank's answers on this. I, I, I mean, I agree with him. I, I do. I, I think the FMC needs more power. I think the FMC needs to be able to oversee these type of demerge charges, all these things. I think his preparation needs some work. I, I mean, obviously he's gonna be confirmed. Wicker kind of said that, that he's already got this job. So he's gonna roll in there. But again, it comes back to that issue that the FMC's role is to seek out and, and, and bring light to these excessive detention and demerge charges. Yet we know behind the scenes, it's John Bakari, who's basically working for the FMC, who's telling the Port of LA and Long Beach to initiate these demerge charges, and not just demerge charge, but hyper-demerge charges, demerge charges that increase exponentially every day. An extra $100, I know it's not exponential, though I understand how exponential works. It increases, whatever you want to call it, step by step, $100. But so that it's going to get expensive to get those containers off. And if you can't get chassis, if you can't get braille, if you can't get road in there, you're going to be charged excessively to get your container, which is going to go to you. This is inflation. That's what this is all covering. And where do those hyper demerge charges go? Are they going to the Port of LA? They said they're going to go to a fund to build, you know, for investment in the port. So this is infrastructure. This is going to finance infrastructure. And we just had a story not too long ago with, with uh, LA and Long Beach complaining about the fact that of the $11 billion in infrastructure in the ports over the past years, 10 billion went to East Coast ports and only 1 billion went to West Coast ports. Well, that's because East Coast ports are trying to dredge and get bigger for those new vessels that LA and Long Beach can already handle. So not sure what this means for us in terms of this. Uh, there's gonna be a commissioner meeting with the Port of LA to determine whether they're gonna do this. But the FMC is going to have to come out and investigate hyper demerge charges in the Port of LA and Long Beach that they secretly pushed Port of LA and Long Beach to enact. And with that, that's the happy news for the end of this week. I know you didn't enjoy the episode, but it's still, if you're informed by it, hit subscribe, hit the bell so be alerted about new videos when they come out, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. And if you can, at all possible, please contribute to the Patreon page. It does help me, helps me get good new equipment like my new mic again. Here's that new microphone that those of you that contributed to Patreon helped me get. Working on a soundboard uh, to better mix when I have guests on board. So uh, I really appreciate it. Until next week and next uh, video, this is Sal, signing off.